Welcome back. Today we will be discussing how the testimony of the woman at Jesus' tomb point to further proof of the resurrection of Christ. The woman's testimony of Jesus' resurrection is recorded in all four Gospels, but I'll be explaining it by using the Gospel of Mark as it is considered by most historians to be the earliest Gospel account. Now Mark records it as such. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they had laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. What we have here is a recording of the events of Jesus' resurrection witnessed purely by the woman. The Gospels have a great reliance on the woman when it comes to eyewitness testimony, as they were the first to see Jesus' rising from the dead. The fact that only woman were first to witness his resurrection is a problem in the eyes of a first century Jew. And for that reason, we turn to the Jewish historian Josephus. As discussed in a previous video, which I will link in the description below, Josephus the Jewish historian is regarded as a reliable historian in many aspects. The quote I'll be using from him comes from Book 4 of the Antiquities of the Jews, in which Josephus records, But let not a single witness be credited, but three or two at the least, and those such whose testimony is confirmed by their good lives. But let not the testimony of woman be admitted, on account of the levity and boldness of their sex. In this quote, Josephus is recording on what basis should eyewitness testimony be trusted. Towards the end, Josephus then states that the testimony of woman should not be trusted, and or admitted as reliable purely based on the account of their gender. This obviously shows that woman's value was deemed lesser by men in the first century. Celsus, a Greek philosopher and writer in the 200s AD, attacks Jesus' resurrection by stating, who beheld this? A half-frantic woman, as you state. Celsus puts emphasis on the eyewitnesses of this miraculous event being woman, and pushing this standard that woman's testimony is not reliable simply on the basis of their gender. We as Christians are now left with a problem. Why did the Gospel writers record that the first people to witness Jesus' resurrection were women? especially if this testimony is rejected among Jews in the first century, and to some extent Greeks in the second century. But as a historian looks at this from today, it's actually more of a blessing than a problem. It shows that though the disciples know that woman's testimony is not deemed reliable, they still record it as a historical event. This is important, as if they were making up the story of Jesus' resurrection, they would have recorded that Peter or any male disciple would have witnessed Christ's resurrection and not a female. This in a Jewish and or Greek context would have been of more value as a male would have witnessed Christ's resurrection and not a female. But of course, this is not the case in the Gospels. The writers simply record this event being witnessed by women. This shows the intention of the writers of the Gospels that they are recording events as history even if the consensus then is that women's testimony is not reliable due to them not being valued as much as men. Thank you for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed the intertwining of outside historical sources and then contrasting them with biblical accounts. As well, left the outside sources in the description below, so as always, I recommend you check them out and create an opinion for your own. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, and God bless.